Good morning, family of God. How in the world are you today? Isn't it something that God has given us a special relationship with him that we can be called his family? And he's uh, translated us because of Jesus Christ into his kingdom. So we have a new citizenship. It's wonderful to know the Lord in a personal way. And because of our new relationship, we need to be together, we need to love one another, and we need to encourage one another, all right? Hallelujah. Uh, Jesus said, by this, all men should know that you're my disciples, if you show love for one another. We thank the Lord for the wonderful day that he has given us, and we rejoice and we're glad in it. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, Father God, Father of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, Abba Father, we thank you for this grand and great privilege to come into your holy and righteous presence one more time. And we thank you that you made a way for us to come because of Jesus Christ and his atoning sacrifice, his substitutionary atoning sacrifice for us. And we thank you, Lord, for loving us enough to make a way for us to be reconciled to you. And we thank you, Holy Spirit, for drawing us to the Father and the Son, that we might be saved and when we repented of our sins, you completely saved us, gave us eternal life, eternal salvation, and then you took all of our sins away. You came to dwell within our hearts and baptized us into the family of God. My soul cries out, hallelujah. You are a wonderful God, a wonderful Father, an awesome God. And I praise you and I love you and I adore you today. I'm coming to you in the name of Jesus, asking you, Lord, to speak to our hearts because we need to hear a word from you in this dark and dismal world. We need your light to shine in our hearts and shine through us. So I ask the Holy Spirit to fall afresh on me, fall afresh on us, Take control on me, of me, take control of us, melt me, mold me, fill me, use me, and do this for our listeners as well. I ask this in Jesus' name. Get glory to yourself, get glory to your son, in the name of Jesus, and for his sake, amen. Bless that wonderful name of Jesus. Praise his holy name. So let's magnify the Lord, let's worship, let's exalt his name right now, because he who is mighty, as the Virgin Mary said, has done great things for us, and holy is his name. Hallelujah. Can, I, can you say with me, blessed be the name of the Lord. Can you lift up your hands and wave them and say, praise your name, my God, my Father. Praise your holy name. Can you say with me, I adore you. I love you, I worship you, I bow down before you. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Come and reign over us, holy God, and let our praise to you be glorious. Okay, I'm very happy that the Lord has given me this opportunity to speak and minister to you this morning. And the last time I spoke with you was a few weeks ago. And we spoke on the topic, what happens on earth after the rapture, the great tribulation period. This week by the leading of the Holy Spirit, uh, we will delve into the topic, the tribulation period part one. Okay, we're still in eschatology. All right, say the eschatology, the doctrine of last thing. And I really believe that this mini series of messages on the tribulation period is both compelling and relevant to what is taking place in our lives and in our world today. God is omniscient. He knows what he's all about. And we need to look at what we're experiencing in our lives and in our country and in the world from the lenses, okay, of what God said would be happening, all right? And what God said would be happening is happening. His prophecies never miss. Okay, 
Praise God from whom all blessings flow. He has carried us through another week of turmoil and distress. We are actually seeing with our own eyes and hearing with our own ears, the leader of our country and his cronies actively and unabashedly trying to overturn our the results of our November 3rd, 2020 election results. Can you believe that? Our free election system is the linchpin of our democracy. And you know, the, the news and the uh, channels and stations and broadcasts and the internet is filled with false and misleading statements about how the election was conducted. Uh, the fact is, and it's been said and verified, that there was no fraud discovered or proven at all in our November 3rd, 2020 elections. And it's going to be a few rocky months ahead of us. But don't despair. Our God is sovereign, he's faithful, and he's just. All right? If we see it, he sees it, and he knows it. As Mom Clayton used to say, God sits high and he looks low. And while all of this is going on, all this, uh, I call it foolishness, is going on, the pandemic is out of control. It is uh, just exponentially uh, rising in almost every country on our planet. Some countries are handling it better than other countries. Unfortunately, our country is not one of them. So if we want to just state this in simple terms, and I want to emphasize this, God, uh, uh, man cannot control COVID-19, this plague upon the world. And God, through his directive or perfect or per permissive will, has allowed this to happen. And he has allowed it to happen for reasons, okay? And one, one reason I believe is he wants to get the attention of mankind across the globe, and he also wants to get the attention of his people. Amen? All right. Now, there is some good news, all right? And we're thankful for this good news. Uh, the good news is that we're told that a COVID-19 vaccine is on the near horizon. Uh, some people say even this month, the vaccine will be available. I, I heard uh, the date of December 15th, all right? That's in a week or so in the United States. And it's gonna be going to our uh, first responders and those in nursing homes first. That's what I hear, and that's good news. But let me make this clear and i think god makes this clear all right and don't forget this fact and keep it in mind only god jehovah rapha can heal COVID 19. did i hear somebody say amen praise the lord our father god is making it clear that no one can control it except him and the the onus the onus the onus is on us as God's people. We have to humble ourselves before God, ask for his forgiveness, seek his face, and ask him for help uh, in healing during this coronavirus uh, pandemic. Second Chronicles 714 says, and I'm gonna be reading in the New King James Version most of the time. It says, if my people, that's us, okay? In this day and time, that's us, who are called by my name, will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Then I will hear from heaven and forgive their sin and then do what? Heal their land. Our land needs to be healed. God is sovereign and he's actively working for his glory and on our behalf during this crisis. Even though we may not clearly see his hand, even though we may not clearly understand what he's doing, he is working it out. I believe him because God does not lie. All right. Second Peter 2 9 says, and we need to keep this verse in mind and also keep this verse in mind as we go through this mini series. Even today, it says, the Lord knoweth how to deliver the godly out of temptations, out of trials, out of 
problems, okay, out of pandemics. How about that? And reserve the unjust until the day of judgment to be punished. So when he knows who we are, he knows where we are, he knows what we're doing, and he's able to deliver us out of these times, in these trials, in these situations. And at the same time, he knows how to separate us and reserve the unjust for the day of judgment to be punished. So he's not asleep. He sees sin and wickedness. He sees it taking place. And he says judgment is coming quickly. So we don't need to worry, just keep our trust in God. So it's important for us to know what to pray about as we pray. And it really makes me shudder when I think about the, the latest numbers of the coronavirus pandemic on our globe and through our country. And I won't go through all of the numbers today, but I just wanna let you know and remind you that this COVID-19 plague is of historic proportions. It's a once in a century health problem. Now, I'll share this. Uh, the global number of cases are over 65,657,500 thousand cases, 65 million plus, isn't that something? And the global deaths are over 1,530,995 deaths. That makes me shudder, but think about our, our country, the land of the brave, the land of the true, uh, red, white, and blue country, and I love our country. But in the U.S., there are over 14.5 million COVID-19 cases and over 279,879 COVID-9 cases. And that's as of, I believe, yesterday. All right? And I heard on the news that in the U.S., listen to this. One person dies of COVID-19 every 30 seconds. Can you imagine that? Now we have some people who are very good in math, all right? I won't claim to be, but it seems to me that if this message is about 40 minutes long, and we use that rubric of one person dying every 30 seconds, that means during this worship service, I believe, correct me if I'm wrong, and you could text me, but there will be 80 people dying and who would have died during this message. And that makes me shudder. All right. But God, but God, but God, but God, but God. He's sovereign over the coronavirus and everything that is happening in our country and around the globe. He knows the beginning, he knows the end. And because he's sovereign, he will take us safely through it. Now let's focus on God's word. Our text is, our topic is the tribulation period, part one, all right? So our text is found in St. Matthew chapter 24, verses 21 to 22. I want you to keep your Bible open to Matthew chapter 24 as we share from God's word today. And this is Jesus speaking, all right? And he said, for then, for then there will be a great tribulation such as has not been since the beginning of the world until this time. No, nor ever shall be. And unless those day be, days be shortened, no flesh will be saved. But for the elect's sake, those days will be shortened. The elect is not the church of God. The elect is uh, the uh Israelite nation, the Israelites, the Jews, okay? And as we go along, we'll talk about that a bit more. I believe that we're truly living in the end times. Why do I believe it? Because Jesus said so. In this chapter, chapter 24 of Matthew, he's clearly saying so, all right? It's very important for us to know and understand the times in which we live. Jesus doesn't want us to be ignorant. He didn't want to, of this, he didn't want his disciples to be ignorant. That's why he took time to sit down and share it with them. And then he left it as a record for us, all right? This 
information on the end times and what is going on in the end times should inform us of how we ought to live. It also should inform us and give us uh, an urgency to tell others not to miss the rapture, but to know Jesus Christ for themselves. It's not going to be a, a deep study, a deep dive, but it's going to be a brief overview. And as I go through it, uh, trying to pick out pertinent uh, uh, events that's going to happen during the tribulation period. Sometimes it's hard to choose. All right. So some information, I, I'm probably going to have to skip and just mention it. Some I'll go deeper into it, but I'm trusting the Holy Spirit to lead me. God's clock has been ticket for almost 2,000 years. All right. Almost 2,000 years or more. All right. This message will be, today will provide more background information to the tribulation period and the uh, future messages will talk about specific events that will take place. In approximately 95 AD, Jesus gave instructions to Apostle John. They call him John Revelator, the Revelator, to write his final words to the church, past, present and future while he was uh, on in exile on the island of Patmos. And he recorded these instructions in a book of Revelation. The Re book of Revelation is the revelation of Jesus Christ, not John's revelation. John just penned what Jesus told him to write. And he promised a particular blessing for those who read it, hear it, and heed his words. And then there's, there's a statement in there, a phrase that says, for the time is near. The last days or end times began according to the word of God, when Jesus Christ was incarnated, all right, that's why we celebrate Christmas, all right? He came, God put flesh and blood on his word, and he came into this world uh, born to a virgin, all right, and as a babe. And that's great because he was able to experience everything that we would be experienced and understand to be a great high priest as well as the Savior. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. But let me also tell you, and you need to write this down in your notes or put it in a, in a mental note, that one of the most significant end time signs was the regathering of the Jewish people back into the land of Israel and the recognition of Israel as a nation in 1948. They came there, they're going to stay there, and they're going to stay there through all eternity. I believe it. Why do I believe it? Like I said before, because God said so. All right. Now, let's listen to what Jesus says about the signs and signal of the beginning of the end. I told you to keep your Bible open to St. Matthew chapter 24, and we're going to read through verses 4 to 14. And as I said, keep your Bible open to this. And Jesus answered and said to them, Take heed that no man deceive you. Isn't that a very interesting? He said, I want you to listen to what I have to say because there's a possibility that some people will come and try to deceive you and twist things and cause you not to believe what I said. All right? He said, take heed. It says, for many shall come in my name saying, I am the Christ and deceive many. As I was sharing with uh, my local church in Philadelphia, uh, that as I was doing research, I came across a church in uh, uh, a remote section in Europe where there's a man that calls himself Jesus. And he dresses like the pictures that you see of Jesus and people are actually worshiping him. Don't tell me that this is not happening. It's happening. I saw it for myself on the internet. And Jesus went on to say that ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that ye see that ye be not troubled, for these things must come to pass. Then he said, but the end is not yet. You're going to see these things happening. We don't hear a lot about it because our news cycle is, is sucked up with information about one person. All right. But 
uh, in African nations, there are wars. In Asian nations, there are wars. Uh, 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 China and uh, Russia are in disputes with other countries, smaller countries, and wars. Okay. Jesus said, for nations shall rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom, and there should be famines and pestilences and earthquakes in diverse places. This is happening, all right? And the type of warfare that we're hearing about is not the, uh, the, just the weapons of uh, armor uh, or, or guns and bombs and things like that, but it's now uh, uh, warfare with technology. And he said, but these are just the beginning of sorrows, things that are making people feel real bad and making people suffer. Then he said, then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted and shall kill you and shall, and you shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. Jesus said it, and guess what again? This is happening in nations like China, some Arab nations with Christians and people who call themselves Christians. It's very, very hard for them to get together in some places to worship freely. Thank God that we can still worship freely our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ in the United States of America. And he said, and then many, then shall many be offended and shall betray one another and shall hate one another. And many false prophets shall rise and deceive many. Happening, it's happening. Uh, QAnon, think about that. It's happening, it's happening, it's happening right now. And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. But he who endures to the end shall be saved. And the gospel of the kingdom will be preached in all the world as a witness to all the nations. And then the end will come. And we're going to talk about that as we study. Our great commission is to go into all the world and make disciples of all men. And that's why we have missionaries and uh, uh, tele television and, and uh, uh, radio ministries and tracks that go all over the world. But there's going to be a great uh, missionary revival that's going to happen later on, and the gospel will go across all the world. We'll talk about that later on. All right. The gospel of the kingdom will be preached in the whole world. Then the end shall come. In addition, we're seeing this now. Russia will rise as a strong military power. Putin and, uh, and Russians are very much offended that they lost their place in the world and Russia was uh, uh, divided. They're trying to go about uh, bringing them back together and it's something for you to, to think about and keep your eyes on it. Arab nations will, reunite, will unite as enemies of, of Israel. The European Union will reform, okay? Uh, think about the United Kingdom or uh, uh, England. Uh, right now, they're still trying to separate or being separated from, what do they call it, Brexit from the European Union. Don't be surprised if they get back into the European Union. Right now, they really don't have any plan for the economy, and that might cause them to move toward that. Something for us to think about. And uh, we see this with our eyes right now. My question is for you, where is the United States of America? And as I was reading uh, and studying about the end times and tribulation period, and even seeing uh, films that uh, kind of uh, depict this uh, from, uh, from uh, uh, a visual point of view, it used to always go into my mind, how can these people be deceived? Uh, how can they be deceived? They see these things right before their eyes. And and it, it, it just came to me as clear as, as, uh, as, as uh, light. Uh, people are being deceived right now. They're right now believing a lie and not the truth. Right now, in terms of what is going on in our country, in terms of the coronavirus pandemic going on right in our country, we have people who believe the lie about the, the, the fact that the election was stolen from the president. He's the only one who was talking about uh, the election and, and uh, 
how it's going to be fixed and stuff. He was the only one. And I find that whenever he says something about somebody else, it's something that he's doing. That's my my opinion. All right. But this whole thing about downplaying the coronavirus pandemic, you have people who won't protect themselves or anybody else because they believe the coronavirus pandemic is just a flu. All right. And the, uh, what they watch on TV and what they hear is not showing them the real truth. All they have to do is go to a hospital and see that. And maybe when they or somebody they know is infected by it and God forbid die from coronavirus, they may believe it. I've even heard uh, stories of nurses and hospital uh, personnel, doctors talk about the fact that people come in and they're infected by a coronavirus pandemic, COVID-19, and then they fight with the doctors and the nurses, telling the doctors and nurses, why are you wearing all of that stuff? They're wearing their protective gear. Take it off. This is just this is just a, a, a flu. I, I, I want to see your face. And they're fighting with them. And they're fighting with them until they get put on a ventilator. And then they begin to believe that, hey, there's something to this coronavirus pandemic. And then they, we've even heard testimonials of those who went through it who came in and didn't believe about the coronavirus pandemic and left there saying, I thought it wasn't real, but it is real. All right. So uh, second uh, Thessalonians 2, 11 and 12 says, and for this reason, God will send a strong delusion that they would believe a lie and that they all may be condemned who did not believe the truth, but have pleasure in unrighteousness. The Bible talks about people being punished, not just for the ones who do it, but uh, evil, but the ones who take pleasure in evil. All right. The raptured church, Christ is coming is fast approaching. Uh, the Lord will descend with a shout uh, and a trumpet of God. All believers living and dead will suddenly meet the Lord in the air. Okay, that's what we're looking forward to. First Thessalonians 4, 16 and 17. It's still doing research. And I even found in Wikipedia, that is your internet encyclopedia. They even talk about the rapture and the tenets of the rapture. All right. Uh, it says, those who are alive and remain to the coming of the Lord should not precede those who are dead. That's First, first Thessalonians 4.15. The dead will be resurrected first. First Thessalonians 4.16. The living and the resurrected dead, excuse me, resurrected dead will be caught up together in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. First Thessalonians 4.17. The rapture will occur as a component, component of the parousia. And that is ancient Greek term meaning the presence or arrival or an official visit. Just recently, I finished an online uh, Bible course uh, from a, a, a renowned uh, seminary. And I, the Bible course was on First and Second Thessalonians. I got so much out of that, all right? And they were talking about that, uh, parousia, uh, the fact that the people were looking forward to the coming of the Lord. And the meeting of the Lord in the air will be permanent. And it says, and so shall they ever be with the Lord. First Thessalonians 4.17. So more background information. There are numerous views regarding the timing of the rapture. Uh, and biblical scholars have looked into it and shared their views and their reason for sharing their views. And the timing of the rapture is not a salvation issue. All right. But, you know, the, the, the fact of the rapture is something that all believers in Christ need to believe. Uh, there are three uh, prominent views. The first one is the pre-tribulation position, and it adv advocates that the rapture will occur before the beginning of the se seven year tribulation period, while the second coming will occur at the end of it. All right. Uh, the mid-tribulation position espouses that the rapture will occur at some point in the middle of the tribulation period uh, or during Daniel's 70, 70th week. That's really something in the book of Daniel about his seven, uh, 70 weeks. The tribulation is divided into two periods of three, three and a half years each. Mid-tribulationists hold that the saints will go through the first period 
uh, 33 and a half years, but will be raptured into heaven before the severe outpouring of God's wrath in the second half, which is popularly called, proper, popularly called the Great Tribulation. In the post-tribulation believers, their position is that the rapture will be identical to the second coming of Jesus or as meeting the Lord in the air and it immediately precedes Jesus' return to earth before the uh, millennium. All right. I believe that the Bible supports the pre-tribulation uh, position. And I don't have time to really go into that today. Uh, but I will tell you that the moment after the rapture, the spirit of God will remove any straining or actually uh, influence on the earth so that things will be far, far worse than even today. You would think things can't get worse. They can get much, much worse. A second Thessalonians 2, 7 says, for the mystery of lawlessness is already at work. Only he who restrains will do so until he's taken out of the way. He who, rest who restrains is the Holy Spirit. The mystery of lawlessness, I believe, is the spirit of Antichrist that is already in the world. All right? Uh, during uh, uh, approximately the first three and a half years of time in the tribulation period, there will be a climax of, 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 of worsening conditions as the anger of God against the wicked uh, and, and signs of, of, of Christ's coming become more evident and more evident. During the last three and a half years, the lawless one, the Antichrist, will be empowered to sit at the center of the tribulation's evil as he personifies Satan, uh, he is the enemy who comes to uh, comes to conquer. And the second three and a half years of the tribulation period, as I said before, is called the Great Tribulation Period. The tribulation was foretold in many books of the Old Testament. Okay, the New Testament is the Old Testament revealed. The Old Testament, uh, uh, the New Testament is the Old Testament. Revealed. The Old Testament is the New Testament concealed. All right. So books like Psalms, Daniel, Isaiah, Ezekiel, Jeremiah, and many others, they talk about the tribulation period. They talk about the second coming of Jesus. They talk about that. They talk about his incarnation. However, the most information about the tribulation period is found in Revelations chapter 6 through chapter 19. The purpose of the tribulation period is that it would be a time of judgment. Although it would be a time of judgment, it would also be a time of great grace. According to the Harvest Handbook of Bible Prophecy, God's purpose for the tribulation period is threefold. One, to make an end of wickedness. The tribulation period is to punish the whole world for sins against God. Two, to bring about a worldwide revival. During the first half of the tribulation, God will evangelize the world by means of the 144 Jews and fulfills Jesus' prophecy that the gospel will be preached into the whole world. Matthew 24, 14. Read that verse again. I told you to keep your Bible open. And the third purpose of the tribulation, we're going to talk about that 144,000 too, if the Lord gives us grace to do it. The third purpose is that God will use the tribulation to prepare Israel for its conversion. All right, we find that in Daniel chapter 12, verses 5 to 7. The Jews will finally actually acknowledge that Jesus is their Messiah and call upon him. And then he will come and deliver them from the turmoil and the punishment that they're going through at the time. All right, Israel will be saved in one moment. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Now, close your eyes and imagine this. Would you? Humor me for a few minutes. Imagine the chaos, the turmoil, the crime, the violence, and confusion all over the world after the rapture takes place. First of all, the political leaders will have to find a reason for the missing people. Uh, they would have to tell, give a reason for how people are missing from the schools, shopping centers, on the streets, in the homes. Can you imagine this? in the parks, in the hospital, walking down the street, uh, on the highways, in the street traffic. Tragedies such as airplanes dropping from the sky and trains and cars crashing, boats and cruise ships without somebody navigating them, 
missing people all over the place. Multitudes of people around the world would be looking for a world leader to quell unrest, chaos, confusion, and violence. A perfect stage for the Antichrist to come on the scene. But can you imagine that? Thank God, thank God. I'm a pre-tribulationist uh, that we will be gone while these horrible, horrible things happen. Now, I want you to write this down or make a mental note of this. The evil one has a three-point strategy. You know who the evil one is, don't you? It's the devil. I don't like to dignify his name. But everything he does is through this three-point strategy. The first is deception, deception, deception. That's lying in everything about lies. All right? The second strategy is deflection, deflection. That is, I'm not the one doing it. It's somebody else. All right? I'm not the one doing it. It's somebody else. I'm not, I'm not, uh, uh, fixing or I'm not uh, messing with or trying to change his election. It's really Biden. Oh, they deflection. Something that I'm doing that I'm putting it on somebody else. I didn't take the cookie out of the cookie jar, crumbs all over my mouth. But it was my little brother. Deflection. All right? Deception, deflection. The last one is distraction. Distraction. And it's a very important uh, one. Distraction is causing people to look away from what you're actually doing and look at something else so that you can see, you can't see the evil that they're actually doing. All right? Distraction. Let you look at something else, getting your attention away so you won't see the evil that's happening. Dr. Jeremiah is prolific in his work on the end times. And I like to always refer to him. He has a blog. And in his blog, he is a, uh, he has one part of it called What is the Tribulation? Uh, and I like him, you know, as a, as a minister, as a teacher, as a pastor, one of the things I like about him is his use of alliteration. To me, it's uh, using uh, the same letter in a message to get your attention. All right. So he said, that the tribulation period will be a time of unrestrained evil. All right, evil will flourish. God's wrath toward the wicked will be revealed. Signs of his coming, Jesus' coming, will loom. It will be a terrible time, but in his goodness, God has not left us unaware. The Bible subscribes various signs. Look at chapter 24 of Matthew, disasters and circumstances of this future event and how we can prepare for it. All right? Now, this is where the alliteration takes place. Okay, it makes me happy. I like it. What signs show the approaching tribulation period? It will be a time of deception. That's the first letter, D. We're going to be looking at letter D. And I told you that deception is one of Satan's uh, uh, tricks. Okay, deception. All right, Matthew 24, 5 says, I told you to keep your Bible open. It says, many will come in my name saying, I am the Christ and what will deceive many. It will be a time of deception. All right. It will also be a time of dissension. Second D, dissension. Matthew 24, verses 6 to 7. Keep your Bible open. He said, you will hear of wars and rumors of wars. Nations will rise against nations and kingdoms against kingdoms. That's dissension. All right. The third D, it will be a time of devastation. Okay. Deception, dissension, devastation. Matthew 24, 7 says, there will be famines. All right. And there are famines already happening in places of the world. All right. And even though the country, our country has plenty of food, we have a lot of people hungry. All right. And look at the food lines. People who were in the middle class who never had to go to a food line before are lining up in lines because they need food. All right. Isn't that something? Help us, Lord. It will be time of deception, dissension, devastation. All right. It will be a time of the third, the fourth one, disease, disease. Uh, Matthew 24-7, pestilences. What is the COVID-19 
but a pestilence. All right. Again, in uh, Matthew 24, 7. All right. We talk about deception, dissension, devastation, disease. It will be a time of disasters, of earthquakes in various places. All right. We, they're kind of downplayed, but the earthquakes are going on around the world. All right. Okay. Deception, dissension, devastation, disease, disaster. Number six. No, is that deception, dissension, devastation, disease, disaster? All right. It will be a time of death. Matthew 24 9. They will deliver you up to tribulation and kill you, and you will be of all nations, hated by all nations for my name's sake. Happen in other countries of the world. All right. Deception, dissension, devastation, disease, disasters, death, disloyalty. All right. Matthew 24, 10. It will be a time of disloyalty. Many will be offended and betray one another and will hate one another. All right? That's what it says in Matthew 24, 10. And uh, it will be a time of delusion. Okay? Deception, dissension, devastation, disease, disaster, death, disloyalty, delusion. Matthew 24, 11. Many false prophets will arise and deceive many already in this world. Uh, uh, Dr. Jeremiah says in his plot blog, okay, and I'm sure he researched it, but he said uh, it's likely that the delusion that will take place will be facilitated by an increase of drug use. He said the mind, the use of mind altering substances, just like narcotics and hallucinogenics, will be associated with false religion, doubtly with the approval of the government. That's coming. It will be a time of deception, dissension, devastation, disease, disaster, death, disloyalty, delusion. It will be a time of deflection. Remember that word? I told you about deflection. Matthew 24, 12. It says, because of the lawlessness, because lawlessness will abound, the love of many will grow cold. People will turn away from God and one another. Finally, the last one is. Okay, declaration. It will be a time of deception, dissension, devastation, disease, disaster, death, disloyalty, uh, delusion, deflection, and declaration. Matthew 24, 14. I told you to keep your Bible open. It says, the gospel of the kingdom will be preached in all the world as a witness to all the nations. If the Lord is willing, I see my time is up. Okay. When we come together again, we will take a look at things, uh, uh, events like the seven seal judgments, which really kicks off the tribulation period. If time permits, the, the rise of the Antichrist, very important, and a 10 nation confederacy and a ministry of Elijah in Malachi chapter four. What should we be doing after the rap, uh, be, uh, because the rapture is coming? We need to anticipate heaven. Uh, Colossians 3, 1 and 2, we should live holy lives, 2 Peter 3, 14. We should tell others and warn others, 1 Peter 3, 15. We should exhort other believers to get involved in the work of the church. Uh, Hebrews 10, 24 to 25. I just really need to mention the jumpstart ideas. Did you read the jumpstart idea that was sent in by an anonymous person that just took place? I was so inspired by that. And we need to provoke motivate and spur one another on and encourage one another and then stimulate and incite one another to do the work of the church, all right? So we need to lean in. The rapture is near. We need to give it all we've got in the service of the Lord. So we have work to do. Let's get busy. Church, let's get to work, all right? And I want to leave with this scripture, Romans 10, 9 and 10, that says that if you confess with your mouth, the Lord Jesus, and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart, one believes unto righteousness in the mouth, and with the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. That's how you become saved. Ask Jesus Christ to save you from your sins. Come into your life, confess it. Ask him, tell him that you want to be a new person, and he will. How do I know he did it for me? All right, the choice is yours. Choose Jesus, choose life, reject Jesus, choose death. If you choose Jesus, you choose eternal life in heaven with him forever and ever. If you do not choose Jesus, you choose eternal damnation. 
in a lake of fire forever and ever. The choice is up to you. So I admonish you, choose Jesus today. Best decision that I ever made. Best decision that you can ever make. So in closing, I have a word of admonishment and encouragement for all of us today. You know what it is if you've been listening to me. It is love our God, trust our God, worship and serve our God, and run the race with purpose. God bless you all and have a wonderful Lord's Day.